One year ago, you and I sat down for an interview just like this one. At that point, you hadn't yet said you were going to be running for a third term. You've since made your way to a third term through the election at this point. I felt very strongly, uh, you know, and I came to the conclusion in the spring when I had to decide that um, the pandemic, first of all, interrupted the flow of work, especially on things like housing and, and so on, that the pandemic also presented some challenges we're still experiencing. I would assume it's a case of unfinished business. Yes, Based a lot of it is. The last term, you didn't get an opportunity because of COVID. No, that, there was a big part of that. I mean, because we were so focused on successfully managing COVID. You know, I think that, that we had to sort of move forward more boldly and, and I, I needed to get a mandate. You can only through an election put some very specific things in front of people that were bolder housing measures, a, a, a strong and dedicated continuing commitment to building the transit. You'll notice my platform was quite, you know, con contained as being really top priorities that we just had to address and where they needed experienced leadership to deal with them. They're all very important. The priorities between yourself and Premier Doug Ford seem to have been aligned at this point in time. Housing, first and foremost. I'm curious at this point how aligned things are behind closed doors. The job you have is to work with them and to develop that good relationship. And are we on the same page and everything? Well, I think it's obvious we're not all the time because we had a big dust up about public health. Uh, we had another one that was sort of brewing with respect to Bill 23, which for the viewers is about development charges in the province taking some money away from the city. If they want a discount on development charges, terrific. And if it works, even better. But they shouldn't do it at the city's expense because we still have to build those sewers and libraries and community centers and transit and roads. Aside from Bill 23, obviously much discussion about Bill 3 and 39. You've had many questions uh, over the course since your election. There's been quite a few people that have brought it up and have said this isn't something that they necessarily want in place. How much have you heard those comments versus being able to say, I'm not going to deal with it, I shouldn't have to use it, I'm going to build consensus? Well, I've heard comments of uh, concern about it. I take the concern seriously enough to have voted for, at the City Council a week or so ago, um, a, a sunset on this and saying that there should be a review undertaken because I think that's the responsible thing to do. Uh, but I reiterate what I've said. I am the same person. People know how I operate, which is in a spirit of collaboration and cooperation with the Council. That's the best way to deal with it. I have also said that I would make use of these new authorities in a very, very limited way. What does that do to consensus building, knowing that there's an undercurrent that exists? I, I, I understand. And it was an issue that you know was perhaps not the best one to start off on the very first day with a whole bunch of new councillors and just a new council. Um, but I would say to you, we had that debate. Uh, the province passed the law. The law is in effect. Uh, I've made some very serious commitments about uh, how I will and will not use that law. And so I would think most of them are going to say, well, let's get on with that work. Let's collaborate as much as we can and let's not have endless uh, you know, debates that do amount a lot of the time to political theatre. Lots of discussion in and around the overall economy and trying to boost that. So you've spoken about making sure small businesses continue to thrive, bringing in companies to try and uh, make sure that the economy remains or continues to grow. How easy or difficult is that at this point in time? It's both easy and difficult. I mean, the easy part is that Toronto is still an incredibly attractive place for people to come and invest from outside the country. The more difficult part is that, um, you know, everybody's being very cautious because of the economic circumstances. Uh, and so we're just going to keep at it. And I think the most important thing we can do here in the shorter term is to get the, the economy that's already here firing at all cylinders and, and, and help to keep inflation down, uh, help to make sure the downtown comes back. Uh, help to make sure the city remains safe so people aren't anxious about that kind of thing. Having the city remain safe, that's a topic that's uh, on the top of our minds well at it this be. point. And how we get to that point is, uh, is a difficult one. It's been a debate for many, many years. How concerned are you, one, and how do you tackle something like this? And you even put a statement out this week about schools. I did. Well, that's because I had, uh, I initiated two, meeting, two meetings so far with the school board and the police, and we've never or rarely sat together and actually talked about something in a concentrated way. And I will tell you again in the new year, you're going to see some very specific programs that where we work cooperative together, which is I think what people expect, to address safety in the schools where it's been a problem. Same with the TTC. And we're going to talk about very specific measures we can undertake to increase safety on the TTC to make sure that people feel safe at all times. And so that's the kind of thing we're going to do, very granular, very consultative, very cooperative with these other bodies because you can't let these things slip. I've made no secret about the fact that people will see, based on my proposal, an increase in the police budget this year. It's not going to be gigantic and inflationary in and of itself, but it's going to be enough that we can make a difference in terms of having people that can do more of the neighborhood policing and do more of the kinds of things we have to do to keep our neighborhood safe. And I make no apology for that. It's the right thing to do. We started the conversation talking about the one we had a year ago 
a year from now, when we sit down again, should we sit down again, uh, what will we be talking about? I think we'll be talking about the fact we've made huge progress on the housing because let's remember, while we dealt with the multi-tenant housing at this council and made a decision which now has to be implemented, a lot of the other measures on duplexes and triplexes and mid-rise development on avenues and so on is uh, awaiting a report that's going to come back from the staff with their recommendations as to changes that have to be made to the law. We will see a very challenging economic and financial year for the city in terms of its budget and just getting the economy back on its feet. I hope we will see further positive evolution in the downtown coming back to life, thereby the transit system comes back to life too because a lot of the reduced ridership is because transit uh, are not, uh, people are not riding transit as much. I'm optimistic. I mean, I think 2023 is going to be a challenging year. I've mentioned the challenges. I'm honest and upfront about those. But I think they will lead to dividends for us if we stay the course uh, and if we continue to be mindful of public health as well.